Oh. Huh. Ghostwire Tokyo comes out on the 22nd. Oh, yeah. That's coming out soon. I thought it was later. Man, I... I Dude, this I, year is like, crazy for games. This, it's absolutely crazy been, for games. That's what I was saying before. Like, I think uh-huh. this year... This year is going to be one of the, like, the big years that we're going to look back on and be I like... Mean, yeah, it's a good year. How do you not? We've already gotten, like, five... Eight out of ten games that have released, yeah. you know, and, and you know what, and you know what, the absolute worst thing about all of this is, hmm. absolute worst thing. Like I've been in Horizon, everything like that. I haven't, I haven't played Horizon in like over a week hmm. since I was on vacation because I've been playing fucking Paper Mario for the <laughs> Nintendo sixty four because that's the, the the creature that I am. I'm <laughs> over here. I I spent. Not sixty, but seventy dollars because it's the <laughs> PS5 version on Horizon. You are ridiculous. And and now I'm like, oh, fucking Ghostwire! Like, when's that come out? <laughs> oh, this Tuesday. I'm, I'm literally like, oh fuck, I'm off on Tuesday. I'll just go pick that up. I'll just go pick that up. Oh yeah, and I got to get Tiny Tina's too, so I'll buy that at the same time. Why not? Just do that. Time to get your fix. <laughs> It's a horrible gaming podcast. It's not good. It's not great. Horrible gaming podcast. It's not even what you would call fair. It's really not that good. Horrible gaming podcast. Hello, my name is Zechariah with Old Man Gaming, and you have tuned into, for whatever reason, another horrible gaming podcast. I am not alone, nor am I ever. With me is... Neil, a.k.a. a Tiny Wizard. I do want to give some special thanks this week. As you guys know, if you listened to last week, I had to take a personal day, so to speak. Uh, Neil and his lovely wife, Kayla, filled in. Uh, I just want to say thank you again to you, sir. And if Kayla was on the show, I would thank her. I did thank her uh, via Messenger. So uh, thank you both for, for just stepping in. And I did not give you guys enough time. To really prepare <laughs> to, I definitely, uh, I definitely, for all the times I've given Neil shit about last minute canceling or having to reschedule, I really, I really cashed those receipts in <laughs> in this last week. So I gotta say thank you again to both of you guys. I think you have four hours notice, and I, I thought the show was really good. Honestly, you guys did a good yeah. job. I was gonna say like it, it was, it was really fun to do. Uh, the only thing that I really struggled with, that I had mentioned to you before too, is. Uh, you know, I know how the flow of this show goes and all the things that get said. <laughs> I don't know if it just goes in one ear and out the other and I just stare into the middle distance while you do the, the rigmarole normal runnings of the show. That that flow of doing <laughs> things does not come naturally for me. I I, we, I we had a we had a really fun time. You guys were great. And now that I've thanked you, I have to razz you for the, the, t- the two <laughs> the two biggest screw-ups I saw, honestly, was uh, in the opening credits, you thanked my brother for all the original audio the channel produces. So yeah, yeah. that's right. None of us are us. It's just my brother doing different impersonations uh, on everything. And then also, your plugs were awesome all over the place oh uh, yeah oh yeah you plugged a show from two weeks ago <laughs> you, you you didn't go back and watch it you didn't plug uh you you also completely forgot everything about the live play thing that i've been plugging <laughs> including that it's on our channel on fridays and then you forgot to mention the horrible arena episode again so but now that i've razzed you neil seriously thank you for stepping in you did a great job uh, in all fairness, you did a great job. Seriously, both yeah, of you did. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you very much. Uh, it won't go better next time. <laughs> <laughs> Honestly, I, I don't think you could have picked a better person to pretend to be me. As weird as this is going to sound, Kayla, you're you're great at being a very old man. <laughs> yeah, that uh, – yeah, She's uh, an old cranky man. Uh, I thought it was great. <laughs> Yeah, it was very interesting. Uh, she very much was just like, oh, uh, so what are, what are we going to talk about? And I just came up with it completely on the fly. It's like, yeah, I will just fucking, we'll just go with it. And uh, it, the, the topic just kind of flowed very naturally. She is very <laughs> natural in, in yes. this podcasting yes. thing, too. 
Yes, yes. Uh, so, yeah. Um, and uh, thank you again to both of you. But uh, we're going to get into normal credits now. Thank you to the <laughs> people who, uh, who make this possible. Number one, if you're watching this on YouTube, behind the fancy timestamps, you're going to see fancy graphics. Most of those fancy graphics are ripped from the internet, like the Dirty Thief I am. However, the ones that were custom-made for this channel were created by Mr. Mark Bell. We thank him for that. And then all of the original theme music uh, created for this channel on OMG is the man who makes the music, my brother Nick Van Sliders. We thank him for that. Horrible Gaming Podcast. All right, so that brings us to our first segment, our most important segment, that is fan traction. That's where we, the co-hosts, talk to you guys, the fans. We discuss all the fun fan stuff. Uh, we discuss all your comments in all the places we read them. Uh, and yeah, so we only got three. One of them is going to be used for the talk down. That's Philbilly330, so we'll get into that in a second. But first, Jason posts, who put the bop in the bop? She bop. Debop. So thank you, Jason, for that. Uh, <laughs> I, I what? Does no necessary what? response. I think it's Cindy Lauper lyrics actually. She bop, she bop. No, maybe not. I don't know. Um, then we've got our good friend William Hoon. Ha! Exclamation point. I humbly accept your apologies. I'm guessing because you guys forgot to say hi at first. I, yeah, I missed I missed the hi. <laughs> it's I the most important part. The hi. It is. It's and that's, that's why I was called out for it. <laughs> he says, wow, Neil, that sucks you can't use your Kishi anymore. Yes. He then continues to say, I really don't want to elaborate on the Nintendo DS Settlers. I le- it left scars that were n- will never heal. Uh, he then says, getting mad during It Takes Two? For some reason, I can't really imagine Neil being mad at anyone. <laughs> Doesn't seem to fit his personality, really. Oh, Will. Look, Neil is not like ever like directly evilly mad at you, but he will yell about some shit. Uh, definitely. Definitely yell were about you, some shit. Were you in the, in the house during the uh, refrigerator incident? Yeah, yeah, <laughs> okay. yeah, yeah. So it, it does happen. It, it does, does happen. Long story does. short, uh, we bought a new fridge oh. whenever we moved. Zach was helping me move, and uh, uh, they they just decided that they didn't want to install our like thirteen hundred dollar refrigerator mm-hmm. because they didn't want to even try to look at measurements, <laughs> even though I like quadruple measured measured the size of the space for it. So yeah, it. It is rare. It is rare. (laughs) But it does happen. (laughs) It does. It does happen. Neil will also go on very loud, angry rants about things. He's Uh, very. Yeah, that's true. He's very dramatic with his recalling of uh, his recalling of events, such as. I already know. I already know what you're gonna say. I already know what you're gonna say. The tree hitting the car. The tree. At the end of the day, a tree hit my vehicle. This story has now lasted for years and is now permeating outside of like my I small tell you, circle out into the world. I want to tell you, William, the best part of this story is not the story itself. It's the fact that Kayla, his wife, is talking about how dramatic he can be and then explaining how dramatic he was about this story. Neil overhears the story, and instead of proof her wrong by saying, oh, I wasn't that dramatic, <laughs> he goes on a rant, the most dramatic <laughs> rant, standing at the end of the room screaming about the tree, and everybody's laughing, and I'm like, Neil, I don't think you get that none of this is about the tree. It's about how ridiculous you get about the tree. <laughs> And yeah, it was it was it was very funny. So Neil could get very dramatic and loud. Wow, that's not necessarily angry, but uh, William then continues to go on. He says, "On gaming with your so or your kids or non gaming p- gamer people, Mario Party is a winner for sure." Honorable yeah. mention to Dynasty Warrior series. Really? You, you put that on easy mode and anyone will feel like a god on the battlefield. I agree with that. I totally agree with that. Dynasty yes, Warriors is a lot sense. of fun. It, it, it is. It's very stress relieving. Uh, thanks for the show and I hope Kayla will be back on a future podcast. Hashtag bring back couch co-op. Loves the hashtags. Love it. 
Uh, <laughs> Kayla has been on podcast before. Yes, she, she will. Has. She will be on podcast again. I promise you, William. She's also been a presenter at two of our horrible game awards. Now she's been on. She was on a show that it was me, Neil, my wife, and Kayla. <laughs> There was also a show that we did with her about The Sims, right? Yeah, we did. We had a, her as a, a guest. A, yeah, we had her as a guest uh, about a year, year and a half ago. Yeah, I can't even yeah. begin to know what what episode that would be. This is actually her fifth appearance on our shows, not including uh, like the the let's plays. This is or the streams. This is her fifth appearance on podcast streams. So on podcast shows, just. She will definitely be back. We love Kayla here. Kayla has a golden ticket anytime she wants to come on just based on her streams. And I'm going to tell you, William, if you want a little bit more Kayla in your life, her best work, you go find – there are two streams up right now on our channel. You can fi- watch the VOD. The first one's called Halo Firefight. The second one is called uh, Boom. Here comes the lasso. <laughs> and it is also us playing Halo Firefight. It is me, Neil, and Kayla playing. You want more Kayla in your life? She did her best work on those two shows. I'm telling you right now. She is nonstop hilarious on those two streams. Uh, I had laugh lines from her on those two streams. Uh, it's just a bunch of her talking shit. <laughs> is all it is. Right, right. All right, so that's it for fan traction, but I do want to give a quick disclaimer. Uh, so I am finally going on vacation with my family, taking a family vacation. Now, we will still have, yes, woo indeed, we will still have some content for the channel. Our normal Let's Plays will come out. The streaming will stop for that week, but we will also have a podcast. However, of course, I cannot record the podcast in that week. So right after we're recording this one, we are recording a special podcast, our episode 134, that will go up during that week of vacation. It will not include fan traction. That does not mean you should not post fan traction to this show. We will catch up on all the fan traction when I come back from vacation the following week in episode 135. But episode 134 will be a special episode where we bring back the horrible arena for uh, for a big full throwdown. And I hope you guys listen to that and vote on the pitches you like the best. Uh, but yes, just so you know, it, your fan traction will not be read on episode 134. It will, however, be read on episode 134. Of five, I'm pretty good at going back and catching it all. So... And if uh, past dictates future, chances are within the next uh, two weeks here in the in-between before we record our next new episode, uh, something major is going to happen that we're going to completely miss out on Yeah, and get to talk about yeah. it way after it's no longer relevant. Oh, way after it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I mean, it's all in the title, folks. Horrible gaming podcast. Um, God help you if you get your gaming news from us. Uh, okay, yeah. so... We are going to go to a talk down that is a little bit more serious, but I think all in all, uh, it's going to be an interesting conversation. And then we have a fun talking point. And by fun, I mean I'm just going to be mad through most of it. So we'll be, we'll be right back with those. Horrible Gaming Podcast. All right, so that brings us to our talk down today. We haven't done a talk down in a while because there hasn't really been a... Uh, a comment that stirred us to the point, but but Phil really had this comment, and you guys brought up the Ukraine last time, the whole Russian Ukraine situation, and I have some thoughts on it that I have been avoiding saying on the internet. But since you guys said about it last week, and now Phil Billy is saying this, which would force me to read it, which is going to force me to talk about it. So <laughs> we're yeah. going to have. I just figured let's make it a talk down and let's get into it. So here is Phil Billy 330's comment. What's up, guys? Good show, Neil and Kayla. You did a good job keeping it entertaining. Just a side note. Just be careful with the political opinions when saying things like it being a good thing that companies like Nintendo are pulling products from Russia. Remember, just remember the Russian people aren't bad people. They have a terrible evil leader in Putin, but only 13% of people in Russia actually support Putin. And pulling products is only punishing regular people. In perspective, the U.S. has been supporting the Saudis' genocide of Yemen for years. We just don't hear about it because it's not advertised in the media. That doesn't make us bad people, but there are certainly bad, high-powered elites in many facets of the world. And I couldn't agree with him more on a lot of things, but in some ways I agree with you guys. So if you don't mind, can I just, can I just run with this for a sec? Yeah, go ahead. Okay. All right, so first and foremost, 
I do think that that companies should take a stand against this. And personally, I think companies should take a stand against the Saudi gen genocide of Yemen. I'm totally with Phil Billy on that. Uh, but I think they're taking the wrong stand here. I, I, I am with Phil on the fact that this hurts Russian people. And this was the first thing I, saw, I thought when I saw all this going down. Putin and Putin's government, who are the people who are ordering this insanity, this atrocity... They don't care if they can play the new Kirby game. They don't care if they can get Netflix. And honestly, banning these things in that country allows him to then give a reason to basically legalize piratization, which actually kind of boosts his numbers. We don't want that. I mean, yes, are there people in Russia that totally support Putin? 100%. Are there people in, Putin, uh, in Russia who want this terrible thing? 100%. But... He has had 13% approval rating, and honestly, these people can't even vote him out. There has been so many accusations, probably accurate accusations, of voter fraud and rigging the election and stuff. Putin maintains his power much more like a dictator than an actual elected official. So, what's the solution? I never have solutions, but I actually think I have one that'll make everybody happy. Here's what they should do. Here's what these companies should do. They should take a stand, and this is how they should do it. We know that they can turn off their services to this one area of the world. So, they have that ability by pressing a couple of buttons. What they should actually do is set up a charity for a UK Ukrainian relief fund and say, look, we're not shutting off services to this place. But every red cent that comes from that place goes right to the Ukraine and the relief effort. Because the Russian people, again, they're under a dictator. They're under a terrible dictator. Us taking away their arrested development isn't going to help get that dictator out of power. He doesn't care about that shit. He doesn't. But if we can allow them, put the power in their hands to actually remove their leader or, or make him look bad, help him fail... That's what we should be doing. We should be setting up charities for all of these companies, and every one of these companies should say, we're not taking any actual profit from Russia. But everybody who uses our service in Russia, that money directly goes to the Ukraine. It funds the relief effort. It funds the war effort for the Ukraine. It helps with the refugees getting out of, of war-torn areas. That's how they should be fixing this, in my opinion. And I think that is a much more solid and intelligent solution than this kind of like near jerk pull out of a place sort of situation because the bad guy here is Putin and his staff that's that's the bad guy I think everybody can agree on that right yeah so I I don't know I I don't like the the idea that we are just immediately pulling out without actually helping anybody it's not it's not helping anybody right now yeah, I guess uh, I guess in retrospect, like how we phrased that, it could have been done a little bit better because I didn't want it to be like a hyper. Yeah, I didn't no. Want it more so to be like a political thing, and like uh, like Phil had said too, you know, there there was there is context surrounding the entire situation, right? You know? And I don't think uh, Phil was I don't think Phil was like yeah. no, castrating no, no, you. No. I think it was more like, uh, hey, yeah, no, absolutely, yeah, you that's. Know. And that's that's kind of why, like, I know we have tried to avoid political things for mm -hmm. one reason or another. I mean, yeah, I remember even we when COVID first started, you know, yeah, oh yeah, we for the longest we even had like a small company meeting <laughs> situation where we're like, <laughs> hey, let's just not say that, yeah, yeah, the COVID, and then the world basically exploded in germs. So, yeah, yeah. I mean, as a result, you know, it was kind of unavoidable. And I mean, inevitably, it was going to get to the point to where I mean, we almost talked about it on, I think you had uh, mm -hmm. an odd and end a couple weeks ago that was like somewhat related to it that we yeah. kind of passed to over. We passed and over specifically starting, to avoid yeah. this, yeah. And it's starting to permeate, you know, more into the the – the main consciousness of everybody here in the States and I'm sure around the world as it is. So, right. Yeah. It is just, it's, it is one of those things. It is a conversation that does need context for it, sure. It does. And it's some, tricky. 
some random dude in his basement, of course, is not <laughs> the authority on foreign relations and I foreign mean, politics and everything. Like you that. get but into that situation, though, because you end up like, I mean, I, I got in some trouble with saying something on the podcast because, you know, these things are very emotional. They're heavy. You say things. And, and the thing is, is when I was saying what I was saying, I don't even necessarily think I – what I wanted to convey was wrong the way I said it was wrong because I was emotional right. at the time. You know what I mean? Like it was a fresh wound. So like the way I, the way I went about talking about it was not correct, you know? Uh, and I, I think it's one of those things where it's like, it's, it's tricky. It, these are really tricky, it, tr tricky, tricky situations to be in. But, but I wanted to just talk about this because, you know, we got to address it. Phil Billy talked about it and it, yeah. in a fan traction. We've got a hard fast rule. We read all fan traction posts. And I think uh I think that yeah, I <sighs> these companies should definitely take a stand. They definitely should. They should take a stand against any any area that's doing this, but they should take a stand in a smart, logical way, instead of just hurting people who don't like the Russian people, like as a collective whole, don't want Putin and they don't want this war. Yeah. Like, I mean, that's, that's, I mean, that's their own polling, you know, like, like the, the average Joe Smo in Russia waking up and going to work doesn't want to be fighting, doesn't want their country to be fighting this war. You know, they don't want Putin in there. Yeah, so like, I, I, it's tricky. I, yeah. And I like your, the, the idea that you put forward. Cause oh, it's one of those things that everybody i feel like everybody wins and it brings that context it does the situation to the forefront and then you've got i mean if you did that right exactly it raises awareness you you do that you allow the you allow the russian people to really take a stand if they want to and if they don't want to and they want to use those services well then they pay for it you know what i mean like it allows it really allows more power to go into the hands of the right people than this, which is just really, I, I mean, like I said, I don't feel like Putin is, is missing Arrested Development or th the latest Kirby game, you know? I don't, I don't think right. he's even affected by that, you know? As long as he's got a bear to ride shirtless somewhere, he's fine. Mm -hmm. uh, but, like, I think that, like, like this really puts the, the power in the hands of the people. And, 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 and if Russia... If we were wrong about it, somehow the polling was wrong and Russia did want this war, well, we would know it right off because they'd have to turn off their Netflix boxes. You know, they'd have to turn off their game systems or all of that money would go to the Ukraine, you know? All right. So, yeah, that, that was my solution. I'm glad you agree with it. But but thank you, Phil Billy, for bringing that up. We appreciate it here as usual. Um, all right. You got anything else to add, buddy? Uh, no, sir. No, sir. All right. Well, let's go to the talk down where I can really get mad and then sound ignorant because now that <laughs> now that we've found some way for me not to sound ignorant, I've got to undo all that, right? <laughs> of course. <laughs> Horrible Gaming Podcast. All right. So that brings us to our talking point. And uh, it sucks. It sucks a lot. And I want to what? say it sucks a bad thing. <laughs> We're going to talk about a bad thing here in the evening. There's no way. All right. Look, Come anybody on, who is man. excited for Starfield, you need you need. I'm going to say this to you as a public service announcement from a 40 year old gamer who has been watching this now very heavily for at least two years, if not more. You need you need to curb that enthusiasm. So. Starfield recently released another one of these developer diary nonsense bullshit blog posts. And basically what it does is, again, did it have any gameplay? No. Did it have any trailers? No. It showed your first companion, which is this, like, robot guy. Uh, and then it was a lot of concept art. It was a ton more of that, like, concept art shit that they've been feeding us. They talked about features, Neil, that are insane. They talked about a feature where there are factions and you can join any of the factions and you can even sabotage the factions from the inside out. Mm -hmm. 
And then the factions themselves, what you're playing for, you can become a leader of it, and you can decide the fate of which factions win and which factions lose. Then they talked about, like, this obsidian feature that they're bringing back for, like, persuading people and talking to people. They just they just talked about a ton of features in this game. Just a, just a ton of features. Guys, we haven't seen any of it. Can I... I'm just going to take you all back. I'm going to take you all back, okay, to another game that would just tell us all about their features, everything you were going to get in this game, all the magical things you were going to see. Long, long ago. That... It was the year <laughs> 2020. <laughs> and you know, you know what that game was called? It was called Cyberpunk 2077. This is Cyberpunk. This is Cyberpunk 2077 all over. They haven't shown us anything. It is all just like... A hype train of bullshit. And we, we have to talk about this because I cannot believe this is happening again. Literally one year after it happened the last time. Cyberpunk was the biggest violator of not showing us anything while tell promising the moon. And then we got not the moon. Not at all. Even if you like that game, we didn't get the moon. We did not get even half the stuff they promised. Starfield comes out this year. It comes out November, according to them. It comes out early November. They have not shown us anything. They showed us a teaser trailer. A teaser trailer. No gameplay. No stills of the game, other than this companion. Nothing. We have seen concept art, a 30-second teaser trailer, and a companion. Please, please, please tell me how I'm wrong. Tell me how this is in Cyberpunk 2077 all over again. Uh, so, uh, yeah, I don't I don't think you're wrong. Now, am <laughs> I immediately am I immediately saying that this game is going to be bad? No. Am I going to say right off the top that it's going to be Cyberpunk bad? Not necessarily. That said, to put it into some context for you, the official announcement outside of the rumors that had been previously going on for years leading up to it was E3 2018 mm -hmm. was when Starfield was officially announced. We heard and saw zero until uh -huh. June of last year uh -huh. when we got a, it, was it the release date? I believe it was. I believe it was the release date mm -hmm. that they had given us, or at least the release window. Uh, and then we had this here, this most recent little dev diary thing where we got, it was what? It was eight seconds, yeah? It was longer than eight seconds, uh, but they, they've been doing this show called Into the Starfield. Uh, I think well, this was yeah. like the first episode of it, and it's just like... I, I can't. I actually have that trailer up. I didn't want to watch it on uh, uh, camera. Hold on, you guys might hear some sound for a second. It's seven minutes. Seven minutes is the video. Uh, seven minutes. Starfield. No, episode. I mean like of like new footage. Oh, you mean the announce the, the announce trailer thing where the person's walking onto the thing? Yeah, it's something along those lines. I mean, to be yeah. fair, I, I, I had said to Zach, uh, I've had a crazy week this past week, so I, I knew something like this was going on. I have not physically seen this trailer. Uh, there is no but, new trailer. Neil, there's no new trailer. Oh, That's what I'm saying. Di dev diary. Yeah, thing, it was a seven-minute yeah. dev diary where a bunch of talking heads talk to you about what's going to be in the game while they show you shit, but they never actually showed you anything other than this new fucking companion thing. Yeah, so uh, we've gone there this. We go. That's what we've gone this complete weird opposite direction now because uh, we have complained many times about you know announce trailers and everything like that and just show us something and you know we get those announcements super early but it's just some dumb cinematic thing that doesn't really mean anything. Uh, but they have not had like regular like gameplay updates or anything now mm -mm. so they tell us what that a game is going to exist give us a very broad stroke as to what it's going to be mm -hmm. and now for a game that's supposed to be coming out in basically eight months from now still have no real information outside of a grand total of maybe what four minutes if that of 
in engine footage, mm-hmm. not even gameplay. Not even, yeah. And this and this is supposed to be coming out this year, you know. Mm-hmm. Nintendo can kind of get away with it to some degree, even though they haven't been in my eyes for the past couple couple months because they usually deliver. Mm-hmm. But uh, Bethesda has not earned that. Uh, yeah. They did at one time have that right, uh, in my eyes at least, to at least be able to get away with it and be like, yeah, it's probably going to be good. But given their track record recently, I I don't think. Yeah, I, I am leaning more Here's, so towards a cyberpunky situation. Yeah, it, my problem isn't even that it's like, oh, it's coming out this year and we, we haven't seen any announced trailer. My, my problem is that we haven't seen any gameplay. Like, there's no right. gameplay from this. This is a promise. This is a promise of a promise right now. You know, you look at the Nintendo stuff. You mentioned the Nintendo stuff. Uh, Nintendo... I mean, I'm not Nintendo's biggest fan. Everybody knows that. But when Nintendo does it, they show you a gameplay footage. I don't think I've seen an announced trailer from them since Breath of the Wild 2. Every one of their trailers that comes out has gameplay in it right off the bat. Kirby, the new Kirby game coming out, the first trailer that they showed from that, the first time we even knew they were working on it, had gameplay footage in it. I don't know if you remember that. I mean, Dread, the the first trailer we saw of Dread... Metroid Dread had gameplay yeah. footage in it. They, they 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 come out their first trailer has gameplay footage and then they release it 6 months later. I'm all for that. I'm all for that. What I am not for is being promised the moon. Now, I will agree with you. Does this mean it's going to be bad right out the gate? No. There's no way. But I'm going to tell you right now something that makes me nervous anytime you have one of these games talking about how good the game is going to be without showing us anything of the game it feels like they're really trying to make you look at this hand while you don't look at this one and the problem is is when you end up buying it from this hand you don't get your money back from this hand that's why they want you to look at this hand we're not talking about uh, an industry that gives refunds we're talking about an industry that wants you to pre-order it so that they can collect that money instantaneously use that money to get more money from investors and then they what they're going to do with that is once you have it you're not going to give it back because you've played two hours of it that's that's one of my big problems with this is whenever i see something like this it reminds me of cyberpunk because that's what cyberpunk did Uh, they did show some gameplay towards the end but still it was very it was very uh, it was very skewed so that they never showed you what they said that you could do. They were just showing you some cool scenes and then telling you you could do this thing that you didn't necessarily be able to do in the finished product. Uh, and, and, and with this, it's even more so. We don't have any gameplay videos of this game that's coming out in seven months. We don't have any gameplay footage of this game. Mm-hmm. So, like, at that point, <laughs> at that point, that makes me very nervous. Like now that feels to me like you're trying to get those pre-orders so that you can make the money ahead of time. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, that, that bothers me. This feels like a con is what I'm saying. I'm not saying it's going to end up being one, but it feels like it. And remember too, Todd Howard did that unfiltered uh, a couple months back. Yeah. And he was asked, too, about, like, the release date and everything like that. He was very cagey on all things. And he had even said something along the lines with the release date. It's like, oh, well, it's penciled in on the calendar. Uh-huh. Uh, but it's written in – I think the exact quote was, it was written in pencil, not in ink. Right. So, like, we still don't know. And the fact that they're not really showing us anything kind of leads me to believe that uh, – what might happen, my little guess on the situation, is around these E3 times, they're going to show us a bit of gameplay. It's not going to be anything crazy. It's just going to be a little bit, maybe some more in-engine footage. But we're going to get an update to that release date, and it's going to push to 2023. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, I'm I very nervous about that. And and I'm, I'm even more nervous if they don't do that because I'm going to say this right off the bat. I'm not going to be fooled again. This will not be a game I buy day one. It just won't. Won't be. Well, I mean, so if you don't have to buy it. Oh, it's Game Pass, isn't it? Mm-hmm. And oh, yeah, I guess that's true. Which which is fine. 
which cool. is fine. I get to review sure. it right off the bat then. I get the best of both worlds. I don't have to buy it and I'll get it. <laughs> I'm, I guess I'm saying I'm not ready to put the hashtag boycott on it yet. But at the oh, okay. same – I think that's my T-shirt, by the way, if I get a T-shirt. Hashtag boycott. <laughs> uh, I'm not there ready to go. put that hashtag boycott on it yet. But at the same time – this is feeling like a con. It really is. And you're right. Bethesda has had great games in the past. I'm not saying they haven't. But they have botched a number of them in the recent future. A number of oh, them. Yeah. I mean, so, I don't know. They're just... Even the language in this seven-minute video is very, like, you get to carve your own path and be whatever you want to be in this world, you know? And, like, I love that. Yeah. I love the idea of that. But when people use that language, I immediately think about cyberpunk because I couldn't be what I wanted to be in that. I had to be the same dude that everybody else had to be. Like, yeah, I, I don't know. Go ahead. I'm talking. Too oh, much. I was gonna say too. I don't know if you'd seen or not. Uh, they did. Uh, Adam Sessler did a, a whole the secret ish history on cyberpunk. I didn't get to watch it. I have seen that it, it's up. I haven't gotten to it watch was, it. Yet. Yeah, it it was it was good. Um, Great. He's awesome. Was, yeah, he he really is. He yeah. he has aged like a fine wine. Fine, He's amazing wine. Yeah, he um, is. I I think <laughs> I want to hang out with him. Like seriously, I want to hang out oh, with him. Yeah. Like I want to get yeah. a beer with him and just bitch about video <laughs> games. Would be right. amazing. <laughs> yeah, uh, uh, but you know it it may be some of the same situation because that's what it was with Cyberpunk too. Mm -hmm. right? Oh, you know you can have you can scale every wall and there's right. gonna be police chases and everything like that right and, you know in the romance end, any character in the game you couldn't, yeah. yeah you couldn't do any of that stuff in the end it was the the best you got out of all of that was cops immediately appeared behind you when you did anything <laughs> and uh, you just kind of had to run around the corner and they forgot about you i didn't even like, have that i didn't even have that experience i literally shot people in front of cops and they just didn't care i was yeah, like I mean, i've murdered are, seven yeah. people in front of these police officers they're just like okay cool whatever man yeah meanwhile like there was one time i was literally just walking by <laughs> where there was like it was supposed to be like a crime scene and some investigation was going on I was simply walking by and I just got too close to a top a cop uh -huh. and they all started shooting at me. I was like, I'm just here and I'm like not even engaging with them. I just walk around the corner and then dudes appear. It's like, okay, <laughs> well, I just got to take them all out now. <laughs> this is annoying. This but is yeah, terrible. It's yeah. A, yeah. It, it's the same sort of situation. Like, like you said, we're getting promised all these things. Mm -hmm. It's going to be so good. It's going to be so great. We built an engine from the ground up. You know what? I almost wonder if it's going to be strictly a graphics engine. That they're yeah. still going to be rocking that same exact yeah. engine that they've had for a while. Yeah. I I am I do not believe for a second that Starfield is anywhere near what they're saying it is. And look, I could be wrong. I would love to be wrong. This game sounds really cool. Like it sounds like something that would be awesome. Like it's yeah. like a, a kind of NASA punk sort of game where like you can literally do anything and go anywhere in your spaceship and and it's just whatever. That would be awesome. That would be awesome. Skyrim in NASA punk, sure. I'm, I'm give me, here's my money. Take it. But you haven't showed us any of that. We haven't seen any of that. We we all we have is four nerdy developers. Don't get me wrong, I'm nerdy. That's why I can call them nerdy. Nerdy developers yeah. in a room talking about stuff that is going to be in this game without any any actual proof, any actual, like, here it actually is. Here's what we have for you. That bothers me on a level, and it really, really makes me feel cyberpunk stuff. And that, and that's I, I, that's one of the reasons I wanted to make this my t our talking point today, because I'm just... I've been waiting for start. This is like the third time Starfield has like come out with a bunch of details and just showed us a bunch of concept art. You know. Yeah, but I mean, in the end, in the end, like, what have they told us? Like, if we if we look at all of these little info dumps, right, that they've given us, 
what has been told that has been like direct and factual and has been proven to us. Sure. Yeah. We're going to have, we're going to have X, Y, and Z. We're going to uh-huh. have, you know, uh-huh. you can join factions, this, that, and the other. All we really know concretely with this game is you will be in space and it will come out on or after uh, November. What was it? Ele- is 11. It November, November 11. Really? Yeah, November 11th. Right now. Yeah. yeah. With the pick in the Skyrim date. You know, here's the thing too. And that's a good point. You really, that is a good point. They, they've pointed out all these features, but they never concretely said exactly what they are because they haven't showed them in the game. There's no proof of them. The only thing we know is that there's going to be a robot companion named Vasco. That's it. I, I, and what this does, and this was a lot of Cyberpunk's problem too, is what this does is it allows people with the internet like us to speculate. And, and when people start speculating, they start building a game in their head that does not exist, will never exist. And that is the problem with stuff like this. And, and I think they're almost preying on that. And that's why I think this is so kind of shitty, so kind of almost malevolent, is they're preying on people's just ingrained ability to make something that they don't quite know what it is cooler in their own head. You know what I mean? And yeah. and now they're like, oh, this game's going to have all these things. And nobody actually said the game was going to have those things. But you've allowed them to think that. And that's almost as bad as lying to them. You know? Mm-hmm. And it's, I don't know. It's just, it's this this is really giving me PTSD for the whole cyberpunk thing. And, and guys, and gals, Bethesda, I, there are a lot of people out there who are like, Todd, how are we trust, man? Todd, how are we trust? Look. Todd Howard is not God, and he's definitely not God of gaming. And I want to just go ahead and point out that every one of the games that you love from Bethesda was also kind of a failure in some ways. Skyrim was a genius game. I'm not saying it wasn't, but it had bugs out the ass. It still, 10 years later, launched in the anniversary edition with the weird bug where if you're talking to somebody, they teleport outside if you walk through the door. (laughs) <laughs> how's that still in the game how's that still in the game oh, how have you man. made us pay for this game over 10 times and it's still if somebody's just like talking to me and i walk through a door they're just suddenly outdoors next to me how is that still a thing that kind of stuff is bethesda it is bethesda to the core and like as cool as a lot of these games are they've always come with that and while we have accepted them, I think we need to remember that, like, while they're capable of amazing things, they are also capable of some shitty, shitty shit shit. And, like, <laughs> I, I, there is nothing that Starfield, that they've showed us on Starfield, to say anything other than more shitty, shitty shit shit. In fact, they haven't even showed us anything, guys. And that makes me way more nervous than when they show us stuff that means it might be buggy. They haven't showed us anything, anything at all. Uh, yeah. go ahead. And that's, I was just going to say like, and that's the biggest problem. Mm-hmm. Is everything that we have seen, it doesn't mean anything. Yeah. Cause like it, it has not existed yet. You can yeah. make a, a trailer that's a vertical slice that has all of these different things in it. I mean, mm-hmm. cyberpunk even did it. Yep. And they even said it's a vertical slice. It's just a one single yep. mission. We ripped it out and this is what it's going to be. And at that point, when you're working with something that small and that relegated, you can very well, you know, spend some man hours to get it to look and do and function in mm-hmm. such a way that you want it to. Yep. I mean, there's been a lot of games that have done that sort of stuff in the past. Um, mm-hmm. There was uh, Spider-Man for PS4 had some stuff like that um what was it uh the why am i spacing on the name of this right now the the hacker game uh, watchdogs yeah watchdogs the first watchdogs you know mm-hmm. wasn't even running on the hardware is running on like a super high end pc yep so it looked way better than it actually was yep and they can still do that to you and they still do that kind of stuff with you yeah um, i mean they did that with halo infinite too they had that fucking yeah. thing running on a PC when it still looked kind of shitty, you know? Yeah, and it, it, that's and that's the thing is everything 
everything you see, everything you hear, you have to take it with a grain of salt now. And it there is, are some yeah. companies you can mm -hmm. trust more than others, but never trust them completely. I am, that's 100% gospel. I mean, and guys, you're in an industry with no regulation. Nobody is checking and balancing what these people are saying about their products coming out. Okay, so they could literally say anything to you, and they have the technology to show you whatever they want to show you. It does not mean that game is going to be that. It, it, it rarely does. And, like, <laughs> there is no refund. There's literally no checks and balances. So if you hate it, you're stuck with it. So, like, stop pre-ordering this game until we see any sort of fucking footage on it. You know? Like, I, <laughs> like right now, I went to IGN, uh, to Game Informer's article of this, do you know what's at the bottom of the article? Oh, what? Starfield, products for this article. Starfield, platform, release date, and a button to purchase it. Uh, exactly. And you know, I am positive, hundreds of thousands of people have bought this game already. They oh, haven't yeah, even it's, it's seen been, this game, and they bought this game. Stop doing it. That's what I'm saying. Has been purchased. Stop doing it. That's what they're doing. That this is a con artist game right now. Stop pre-purchasing this game. I, I'm not against pre-purchasing on a whole. I'm not. I've got Tiny Tina's Wonderlands pre-purchased already. I'm not pre against it. Stop pre-purchasing games that haven't shown you anything. Anything. There's nothing showed to you from them. There's no reason you should be buying this game. There is no actual product. There is an idea of a product that they are talking about here and that they are promising to give you on a certain date, but they have showed you no proof of that. Stop taking these developers at the word. They're all liars. I, I don't know. I don't know. I guess we're kind of beating a dead horse. You want to go to odds and ends, boss? Sure. Let's do it, guys. Let's do it. Horrible Gaming Podcast. All right, so that brings us to our final segment, and odds and ends. This is where we collect smaller news stories that don't necessarily deserve a full talking point, but something we want to tell you guys about, we want to riff about, we want to talk about, uh, and we just tell it. We just go through them. I've got seven. Neil has informed me he has five, so I'm going to be starting us off. And I'm going to start us off bummer. There's going to be a lot of bummer delays in mind, just so you guys know. But f the uh, the whole Forsaken game that everybody's been talking about uh, from Square Enix yeah. has been delayed. Uh, pff, no doubt, no doubt. That game is one of those games that I'm like, why are we making this this pretty? Uh, so it's not a game I'm necessarily interested in anyway shape or form but if you are excited for that to come in the near future it is not that has been delayed yeah i'm definitely i'm that's one of the ones that's been on my list <laughs> that I've been we literally just talked about how i'm a terrible person and just want to buy all the things <laughs> and never do anything with them but that was on the list and that would have been i feel like it would have been higher up on the list for me the, mm. this year but yeah unfortunately is getting pushed along down the road. Yeah, yeah, it is. Yeah, it is. Shocker. I mean, Square game getting delayed. I never would have. Honestly, another thing we talked about between the break is how many good games have come out. So like, it we've gotten more games in the first two months, three months of like uh, this year than we got all of last year. So like, yeah. right off the bat, I mean, we got Sifu, Tunic. Uh, we got, uh, um, Horizon Zero West Forbidden Dawn, uh, <laughs> we're getting Ghostwire Tokyo, uh, Tiny Tina's Wonderlands, Elden Ring, like, already, those are more than we got the entirety of last year, so, like, if every game coming out gets delayed, we're still looking pretty good, as far as I'm concerned. Yeah, absolutely, it's gonna be a good year. Yeah. Do you want to go with another one? Or you want me to to go with another I, one and even I'll, this out? Uh, I'll go. I'll okay. go. That way it should uh, be pretty well even. All right. Uh, so apparently uh, Reggie fils opened up at an interview at mm. South by Southwest because uh, apparently he was on a on a board uh, uh, on a panel for questioning at that, and uh, he was talking about his time over at GameStop. Basically, to uh, paraphrase, uh, he basically said that he knew the business both as a consumer and as a vendor and had strong opinions on how to pivot the business as a whole. But his fellow suits didn't want to hear it. And because of that is why he left GameStop's panel. Um, so, yeah, that's 
And, and if there is anybody, like he said, like the dude ran Nintendo of America for shit's sake. Right. He was like, he was like a dude within the industry. Right. Like he didn't do anything but run the company, but he was a personality that most people in gaming knew. Uh-huh. And he had an ear to the ground with that sort of stuff. And it, he, we thought when he joined, I remember when we first talked about this, when he did join originally, uh, that this was going to be, you know, he was going to be the guy. If anybody could do something about it, it was him. But <laughs> apparently he couldn't do it alone. And they're just so set in their ways over there, over at GameStop. I don't know. Maybe they're riding high on that meme stonk money. <laughs> Yeah, there's something, man. I don't know. I don't know. If you're not listening to Reggie, like, good or bad, like, I don't necessarily think the dude is a saint or anything like a lot of the internet does, but good or bad, like, he he made Nintendo, he brought Nintendo back from the brink, in my opinion. Uh, so, like, why you're not listening to him, I don't know why. You know what I mean? Right. Uh, all right, so my next one, this one was brought to us by our man on the street, <laughs> Phil Billy three three zero actually brought this one to He's me. I just on the I want I want <laughs> I always wanted to say we got a man on the street. <laughs> now it's just a broadcast. <laughs> yeah, right. I uh, like the old news news breaks we used to do at the beginning of the show when Logan oh, was still here. Yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. I forgot about that. Mm-hmm. Uh, so so his his thing he wanted everybody to know about because anybody who's met Phil knows he's a Star Wars dude through and through. He bleeds Star Wars. Uh, so that Eclipse, I don't know if you remember this got announced, I think this last E3 or something like that, uh, but it was the coming Star from... Wars. Star, uh, Star Wars Eclipse, and it was yes. from the, the game, it was from the studio that did uh, Detroit. Quantic, Quantic Dream. Quantic Dream, right. Uh, so that game is delayed until 2027. Um, what the fuck? Okay. Wait. What? <laughs> right. Right. So I guess the whole thing behind it is they wanted to actually make it a little bit more, uh, like less like a playable novel like the other ones are, uh, and more like an open world type thing. So they released that announced trailer to get people to, you know, apply and to get to staff up. And they have been unable to staff up people to make that game. So so they're like, well, we haven't gotten any staff, so we're still in pre-production. What's even more funny about this to me is everybody got pissed about this on the internet. And IGN did a follow-up story about this, which is this is the only nice reason that I was not on the show last week is because this came out after Phil told me it. But after the episode. So I wouldn't have been able to give this information. Um, but they, people were pissed about it. People were like, what do you mean that's not coming out until like 2027? Uh, how can you delay a game that long? And basically the developer fired back. This is actually an IGN story. And he said, we didn't delay it that long. We never announced a launch window. So we've oh, never fuck actually. You. <laughs> fuck you. Right. Get out of here. Right? That's Right? That is just the biggest <laughs> That is the biggest consumerist. Oh, I know. I know. Come on. Uh, I know. And it just further proves they know what the fuck they're doing. Yeah. Whenever they show these things off, Mm -hmm. they know what they're doing. They're generating the hype. And then, of course, they get to, oh, big bad company, go put you in your place because you speak out of turn. Mm -hmm. Get the fuck out of (laughs) here. Yeah, that's it. They were like, oh, no, we we never actually announced it, so it couldn't be delayed. Yeah, yeah, that's exactly what happened. And it is uh, bullshit, bullshit. So, that's that one. But thank you, Phil Billy 330 for bringing me uh, that story. That's appreciated. Yes, thank you very much for that. <laughs> that I, I, it's information, that's for sure. Yeah, it is. Oh, it is. Jesus. How much bullshit? How much bullshit? All right, you're uh, up, sir. All right. Yeah, so uh, Sony had another state of play uh, a week after they had a state of play. <laughs> yeah, I uh, saw I, that. I don't know uh, what state of play even is anymore. <laughs> um, I guess they just want to drop a trailer and make it fancy. 
But uh, this time it was for Hogwarts Legacy. Yeah, which I saw that. We had wondered where it went, and it looks like a solid okay. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I, so I already am seeing all of the different opportunities that WB is going to have to monetize the shit out of this. Because did you watch this at all? Uh, I have seen some clips. Of it, uh, and I looked at some stories and some screenshots. It's... I did not actually watch this state of. Tra- I, I'm sorry, guys. Harry Potter does nothing for me. Neither okay. does the world. I got no interest in that whatsoever. My wife is reading Harry Potter to my daughter right now, and I literally put my headphones on. I don't care about Harry <laughs> Potter. I'm never gonna care about Harry Potter. And to all my friends, you know who you are trying to get me to like Harry Potter. It's not gonna happen. All right, continue. <laughs> So uh, it, it showed some very – at first, it, it does look beautiful. Mm-hmm. Um, it does look pre- – so it did look pretty. It, it really does look beautiful, very cinematic. They're trying to lean into the movies, uh, how they're playing out and everything. Uh, and the gameplay and everything looks interesting too. Uh, there is one glaring thing that I noticed and I'm sure other people noticed as well. Uh, one of the biggest components – of this is brewing potions and crafting magic items and materials and stuff like that. And they showed you your own little personal space that you use to do these things. And everything you do has a real world timer slapped on it. So you already know what is going to happen there. Oh, uh, so yeah, Warner Brothers is gonna be. That uh, feels like a setup. Shit. Yeah, yeah that a, feels that is like a setup. setup right there. Uh, I mean, something in fairness, that... there are a couple of games that don't have, like No Man's Sky has a couple of things that have real world timers on on them, and it's to add to the realism without actually adding any mon- monetization, especially in their Frontiers update. Like everything with the city building on a planet like all of that requires like oh well this is going to take like three hours to make in game um but like it's it's to add to the realism of like this will really need three hours so I, i'm not arguing with you i think it's definitely means monetization i'm just trying to like give you a little hope yeah. that it yeah. might not be that you know yeah uh, that if it wasn't warner brothers i wouldn't be super concerned about it but right these are the ones right. who basically had a pay-to-win storefront set up for the Shadow of War game. Right. And uh, whenever they removed the shop from that, basically broke the end game. Yeah. So there's that. Uh, but another interesting bit of information that I, I personally didn't see coming. Apparently, this game is coming to literally all the other platforms as well. Mm-hmm. Uh, and, of course via streaming on the switch because that's the only way the switch can handle that's the only way that he's gonna handle Um, that yeah yeah i don't know uh i i don't know what this weird trend is to where one company is basically like the one who is the gatekeeper for all of the information Mm -hmm. and then once a certain period of time passes it's like oh and by the way it's coming to everybody else too right Right. Some backroom deals, whatever, I guess. It's but very yeah. strange, especially when you see them on, like, like State of Plays or, X, or, or you know, like, ID at Xboxes and stuff like that, and then you see them the next week on the other one's stuff, yeah. you know? It's like, why? Why are we doing this? Like, I don't know. It's very strange. Um, okay. So my next one, anybody who is waiting for Gotham Knights. I know <laughs> Asylum's been up and down on that one. Um but it finally does have a release date. It was delayed indefinitely, but it has a release date. And that release date is October 25th. So October, late October, we will be getting to, uh, to power around with the Bat Kids in Gotham Knights. And I'm not going to lie. I still have some high hopes for this game. I think it's a really interesting, cool premise. I love a good beat-em-up. Uh, I think Batman does combat, like close combat. The Arkham games did close combat really well. I think transitioning that into like a four person potentially co-op experience is a cool idea um i am a little bit nervous about the development structure of how this thing has been delayed and then we're gonna come out and then delayed and then come out so i'm a little bit nervous about that but uh but yeah i hope it's good hope it hope it comes out and be good yeah for sure uh 
Okay, your next one, man, if you so, want. Oh, this is probably going to be one of the most bizarre things okay. I have come across. Um, so it was actually a Kotaku article that just randomly showed up. I wasn't even searching for it the one day, and I just had to save the link for it mm -hmm. to read this entire article. Uh, the drummer for The Police, the band The Police. Okay. Uh, <laughs> his name is Stuart Copeland. Mm-hmm. Uh -huh. And he has a very strange Bobby Kotick story. What? Uh, yeah. Okay, yeah. I did not see yes. this. Yeah, this is this is bizarre. So, uh, long story short, uh, he has kids that go to a private school in Los Angeles, and he does this. Uh, he does this like sort of drum lesson fundraiser thing to where parents can say hey you know teach my kids how to play the drums okay so like okay Stuart goes teaches her kids how to play the drums cool as hell you know a classic rock drummer is literally teaching kids how to perform on the drums uh and i guess bobby kotick also has kids that go to this school okay and he beelined it over to him and wanted drum lessons bobby kotick himself Bobby Kotick himself. <laughs> um, and apparently he was like, yeah, cool. I guess like that's fine. Uh, so I, I, I didn't mention the, this part as well. Apparently this is just full of information. Uh, he, uh, Stuart also composed some of the music for the Spyro games. Really? Yeah. Did not know that. So that is it, it. And so I'm like, I, I keep reading on this thing. Uh, so he had some some uh, Spyro stuff at his place. And Bobby was just kind of like investigating his house, I guess. And was like, oh, yeah, Spyro. Cool. And I guess Stuart had no clue who the fuck Bobby Connick was. <laughs> <laughs> so he was like, yeah. Uh, yeah, I, I did some stuff for Spyro. He's like, yeah, I'm actually in charge of Activision. <laughs> we should probably do something with that. And I guess that was the impetus to remake the Spyro games. <laughs> you have the Sting. Sting drummer to thank for that. <laughs> yeah. It, it, look That's at, crazy. Uh, it's, yeah, it's, it's a crazy story. It's on Kotaku. And it, the title of it is The Drummer from the Police Has a Weird Bobby Kotick Story. I... <laughs> I like, just the title alone, I was like, well, this is going to be interesting. And I had no <laughs> idea where the fuck it was going to go. And that's that is, where it ended up. <laughs> that is interesting. That is interesting. <laughs> uh, all right. So moving on. I've got a lot of doom and gloom, guys. Just prepare yourselves. Um, Elite Dangerous. Are you an Elite Dangerous player? Do you like that game, that open world I, space game? I know you don't, but like as a person out there, <laughs> listener, if you if you like Elite Dangerous and you're a console player, well, you're fucked because they have decided to cease all console support for Elite Dangerous. The company has decided that since their most recent update, I think it's the one where you can finally walk on planets, uh, is not going the way that they wanted it to. Uh, they have just decided that they can't keep up with the consoles and like all the console platforms and PC. Uh, they've got to go with the people who brought them to the, the game and that's the PC. So they have ceased all console support whatsoever. Uh, so there will be no more updates to Elite Dangerous on consoles. Oh no. Well, it, it's not good for you, but I'm sure there's some players yeah, out there that I'm enjoy sure there's it. Somebody out yeah. there. I'm sure there's somebody out there. I... I know the name, and that's about it. Okay. Yeah, I actually played the game. It was not for me. Uh, and then I moved on. Um, okay. So, yeah. So, your turn. All right. Uh, this one is bizarre as well, but okay. uh, pretty straightforward. Apparently, Snoop Dogg is going to be in uh, Call of Duty Warzone as a playable operator. <laughs> 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 Did you just smoke pot in their faces and like that was literally the ad for it. <laughs> it, it was like a, a dark screen. You hear like <laughs> war sounds. You see dog tags fall, smoke, and hear coughing, and it's Snoop Dogg. 
Oh my god. Yeah. Hey, Call of Duty players. Are you sick of just killing each other and trying to win? Well, now you can just go smoke pot in a corner with Snoop Dogg, playable character. He has no actual gun skills. You can't even pick up a gun and arm him with him. He doesn't run because his lungs are sawdust. All you can do with him is drop into the zone, find a building, and smoke in a corner. And guess what? You don't actually show up as somebody to kill, so somebody else can win the game without ever shooting you. So so yeah, you just smoke in a corner, I, and then it just devolves into entire games where just everybody smokes in corners until the timer runs out. <laughs> Basically. <laughs> uh, all right. So, so moving on, I uh, I'm kind of bummed by this. Uh, Rumbleverse had a uh, this is the close combat battle royale that's kind of wrestling themed, uh, but very cartoony. I thought this looked cool when it was announced. It was something that I was kind of watching. I think I've told you that before. Yeah. Um, it uh, it had a stress test. Apparently that stress test didn't do too good because it has been oh. delayed. Uh, so its full release has been delayed. It's not coming out. And they, I don't think they've given a date on its release, which is uh, nerve-wracking there. So uh, if you were expecting to play Rumbleverse anytime soon, you're going to be waiting a little bit longer. Very unfortunate. Yes, very unfortunate. Did you uh, did you get in on that uh, that closed beta? I did not get in on that closed beta, uh, so I did not get to try Rumbleverse in that uh, that area. Something was going on that weekend, and I just it was one of those very like closed stress test sort of things. So it wasn't even like a weekend. It was like uh, oh, right. f- Friday from nine to eleven, Saturday from like one to two. You know what I mean? It was very short windows and. I just there was just no way I was going to be able to play that. Yeah. So um, I didn't get in on it unfortunately. So, uh my last one. Mm. Babylon's Fall. Yeah, this is, is kind of cool. I think I know what you're going to say, but I actually think this is kind of cool. Go ahead. Uh, oh, you you do? Yeah. I mean, I, depending I on what you're going to say, it makes me know. nervous that I don't think it's cool. But. I don't know. You might. Uh, you might. I don't know if you know what I'm about to say. Okay. We'll see though. I guess. I guess. Babylon's Fall was released on March 3rd. I believe mm-hmm. it is. Mm-hmm. Uh, that is as of our time recording. Uh, 17 days ago. This is correct. Two days ago from today, being 15 days after release. <clears throat> The Babylon's Fall official Twitter account has already had to make an official statement saying that the game is not dead. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. yeah, which this is... This is cool. Yeah, I think this is cool. Yeah. yeah. Um, so uh, what's, uh, what's great is at the time of that posting, the daily uh, average of players on Steam is a grand total of 170. Look... <laughs> was this game a train wreck? Yes. Was this game a train wreck at launch? Yes, definitely. What do I hate more than people not promising things? People quitting on things. Like, the the people who did buy this game, they expected a certain level of, of uh, updates, a certain level of, like, quality assurance. I am happy that this company has said we're going to stick with this and we're going to continue to develop for it. I'm happy with that. How long will they be able to manage that with 650 players? I have no idea. But like, I do like the fact when a company does not give up on a game. I, I just do. I, do. I don't like it when a company gives up on a game. Should they, should they not promise the moon in the first place? Yes, definitely. They shouldn't release a shitty, buggy product or, or whatever. I, I think Babylon's... I don't even think Babylon's Fall was buggy. I think what it was was it was like just not a great game. Um, yeah. but that aside, still, I hate it even more. Like, look, Mass Effect Andromeda, I've said it before. It's my favorite Mass Effect. I enjoyed the hell out of Mass Effect Andromeda and it had a fuck ton of bugs in the beginning, but I liked the gameplay when it wasn't buggy and I liked some of the things they did with the storytelling. Do I think it was perfect? No way. Should have had more aliens. Definitely. Was there a lot of bugs? Yes. But I actually really liked it. And they quit on it. They quit on it almost immediately when they got backlash. 
I don't like that. When I invest my time in a game, you should invest your time, especially if it's buggy. If you want to keep me around, keep me playing, you should work on this, you know? So I, I like the fact that they're at least saying we're going to keep pushing ahead with what we have until somebody tells us we can't do that anymore, you know? Yeah, uh, I think uh, the one that was really a sad, a sad sort of situation that could have potentially uh, turned around is, I think, was um, oh, Anthem. Yeah, I think. Anthem, yeah, that's another they one. Were, mm -hmm. They mm -hmm. had some cool stuff in the mix, and yeah. what it is that they were actually doing, I'm not quite sure, but uh, <clears throat> I. I it could have been something granted it wasn't really in the end but yeah and and that's that's what i'm talking about i will say that they stuck around with that a little bit longer uh than than probably some other companies did i, I don't necessarily think I, i'll say this the developers who were working on that game never quit on it they just lost their ability to work on it you know and that's because of ea and that's that's a real big bummer to me you know, because that could have been something that really could have been something. Uh, but it's just it never really got that second wind, I think. Uh, so it's just me now, right? Yeah, it's just, you know. All right. Uh, next one. Last sad one, I promise. Uh, the So, <laughs> guys, I don't know how I haven't talked about this before, but the initiative is the supposed quad A development company that xbox has founded uh and then we found out that they were working on the next perfect dark game via unannounced trailer um which we've never seen anything for since uh well that's in serious trouble it, apparently there have been a lot of talks and rumors now a lot of them becoming more and more substantiated that perfect dark is actually in development hell right now that the initiative is not doing the greatest as they should because let's face it guys Quad A is not a thing. It's not a thing. This is this is cyberpunk right off the bat. And I, w I, I can't believe I've never talked about it before, but this is the biggest lie. Like, just adding another A on there, pretending it's going to make games that are better than the games that are already out, you're already pushing the technology as far as you could possibly push it. There's no, there's no way that you're going to make anything better. You know what I mean? Well, like well, Zach, I, I have breaking news for you right here and now. I'm actually developing a couple a game yep yep well i i gotta say neil i i hate i hate to be that one upper sort of guy but i'm actually developing a 6a studio You're uh not. studio game There's yeah oh no way yeah i am no it's definitely possible for me to say that i am see what we did there oh, guys man See what we did there? We said things, but we didn't prove it at all. And that's what the game industry loves to do. Now they're saying that there's a quad A. Quad, what the fuck is quad A? Triple A is the best game out there. It, you're, you're already pushing the technology so far with triple A. Quad A can exist. What does it run on? A fucking Washington, D.C. Pentagon computer? There's no fucking way. Um, so that being said, to add into all of that, the Perfect Dark's game director left the initiative. Ugh. Yeah, Dan Ugh. Newberger, uh, who has been with the company, the initiative, for four years. He was one of the first people they brought on. He was the game director for Perfect Dark. He's out. He just walked. So, yeah, it is... Uh, uh, and what's even weirder is nobody announced it. The only reason they know it is because he changed his profile on like LinkedIn and... And all he changed it to was open to work immediately and is looking for a position as game director, creative director, and design director. There was no, like, I'm leaving the initiative. There was no <laughs> announcement from the initiative, like, we wish him well in his future endeavors. Nothing. He just changed his LinkedIn profile to, I don't have a job anymore. Like, that's it. So, like, <laughs> we saw the Perfect Dark cinematic trailer forever ago. This... this <laughs> It's not none of this shit is real, and and that whole in company is in serious trouble, in my opinion. Uh, yeah. All right, my last one's real happy, kind of just a fun uh, antidotal thing. Uh, so years ago, this is for a little bit more of the older gamer 
style, the, the GameCube had these pictures circling on the internet of a portable version of the GameCube, like uh, like yeah. a small GameCube that actually yeah. like you opened it and it had like a controller in it. So it was big and it was clunky, but there was these concept pictures of it. And ev- the internet went crazy. They were like, holy shit, they're going to make this. This is going to be amazing. Nintendo was like, no, we aren't. This is all fake. This is all a hoax where we have nothing like this in development. Well, a modder has decided to make it real. He went out and made it real. He basically used a 3D printer. Hold on. I'm going to look this up. Cube modder portable. Uh, he went out and he got a, uh, uh, a 3D printed uh, a 3D printing machine. He made a 3D printing uh, version of it. You can You can look it up. Uh, you can just literally type up, uh, why can't I get rid of this menu? I hate it. Oh my God. Bumped a button. Now I can't get out of a thing. Um, (laughs) there it goes. It's gone. Good. Uh, basically, uh, yeah, he, he made it. It's on Twitter. Uh, the user is Ginger of Oz and he made this portable GameCube. Uh, he did it using a Wii motherboard. So what's interesting is you can play anything that was on the GameCube because you could play anything that yeah. was on the GameCube through Wii uh, because of this. And he just basically hardwired it into this 3D printed shell. And it actually looks really pretty. I'm not going to lie. I would consider getting one of these things. I think it's a cool little cool little thing that he created. But, well, yeah. I'm sure he'll sell it to you for a couple thousand dollars. Yeah, no, that's okay. I'm I'm sure he won't because I'm sure Nintendo is already drafting a cease and desist letter. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so that's it for odds and ends. Uh, let's uh, let's head to the plugs. Wrap this bad boy up. Sure. All righty. Horrible gaming podcast. All right, so that brings us to the end of the show and the shameless self promotion that comes with it, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, Neil. Would you have anything special you want to plug, sir? Uh, Well, going to keep plugging Halo Infinite Road. (laughs) Uh, A little whoopser doodle happened in our uh, last recording session. Uh, Yeah, fuck Halo. uh, (laughs) Something happened. Fuck OBS. Fuck Halo. Uh, We got only audio. Uh, So the last little recording session that we were going to do to get us through Zach's break kind of kind of went away so uh, Mm -hmm. if i remember correctly that means there's gonna be a one week break yes yes a one week break Um, there will be an episode this week the week that this podcast is posted but uh the following week we will be off then we will be back to it the week after yeah but and fuck halo and fuck obs (laughs) And it was, you know what? I kind of feel like that was a good one that because because we were just like, yeah, it was great. Dumb, dumb things were it happening. It was dumb things. It was great. They, it was good audio. It was, yep. It was great audio. Yeah. You'll never know what happened. Yeah, just dump the lemon juice on the wounds. Uh, yeah, it was great. It was great, and it's all fucking gone, and none of you will ever get to hear it because fuck Halo. And- and it's the gift that keeps on giving because that means we have to do it all again. All over. And that's why we got to take a break because I'm not doing it again right then. I was so mad. I was abs- I just stared at my screen in rage for like – and and you guys don't understand. Halo 4 levels are so fucking long for no fucking reason, man. Our 20-minute levels of Halo 1 have become 45 to 55-minute episodes because Halo 4 has to – put all that shit in one level oh it's so long yeah, and, to, and to be completely honest too uh, uh usually the episodes are kind of longer because we don't know what it is that we're doing or whatever uh-huh. halo 4 there's not much of that it's very uh-huh. straightforward do the thing here's yeah. a waypoint do the stuff yeah yeah there's no getting lost in halo 4 it's it's go here listen to technical gobbledygook go here listen to someone talk like a medieval priestess even though they're five thousand years in the future then go here (laughs) it's ridiculous all right uh i got a couple things to plug if that's all right uh so guys i don't know if i just decided to compensate for me being on vacation or what but we have a jam-packed streaming schedule this week it's absolutely insane uh, in addition to the normal streams, please check out Aether Dios's stream on Twitch, <coughs> spelled A E T H U S 
D E U S on Twitch. Uh, Wednesday night, 930. Uh, we are doing episode two of Star Trek Axiom, which is our live tabletop play of Star Trek. Uh, the first episode was hugely received. You guys gave us 45 views on it so far for our VOD. Uh, a ton of you watched it in the moment on Brian's site. So if you don't catch it on Aether Dios' site uh, on his Twitch on Wednesday, we will post it Friday here on Old Man Gaming at 8 a.m. as usual. So please come back here and check it out if you don't. And I actually edit out some of the like dead space because we usually take a break in between that's a, that's long so i i usually edit those out so so yeah, I, check uh, it out wherever I, you want i listened i listened a little bit of it because uh we had yeah? our we had a, yeah i know zero about star trek by the way i that's all I right never watched i don't know anything that's going <laughs> on uh i primarily watched it because you know we had our in during covid we had our little reoccurring game night which mm-hmm. was plastic glass yes, so yeah. i know your style of uh game mastering so tuned in for it and all the guys on there are pretty funny well and i just want to let everybody know uh shit pops off this episode i'm telling you that right now if for any reason you listen to the first episode and we're a little bit bored you're not going to be this ep- this episode and we haven't even done it but it's gonna pop off because twists they are be a coming um that being said, this Thursday night we're doing a special a special 330 stream. Myself and Phil Billy, we're bringing back the Borderlands 330. We're going to do a launch stream of Tiny Tina's Wonderlands. Myself and Phil Billy. Phil Billy will be on the YouTube side. I'll be on the Twitch side, and we are going to be diving into Tiny Tina for the first time. Uh, very excited to play that. So please come back here and check that out Thursday night, 9:30. Well. I'd say probably closer to 10, but somewhere between 9.30 and 10 uh, p.m. Um, Yeah, and then finally, another extra stream, Friday afternoon, 1 p.m., going back to Streets of Rage 4 survival mode with my brother, Terry Shakespeare, my boy from the Britons. Uh, We're going to be just kicking ass in survival mode. It's always fun to play with that guy. I'm very excited to do it this week. So, yeah, and then next week, vacation. You will get the podcast. You will hopefully get a review for Tiny Tina's Wonderlands if I can get it done. Uh, and you will also get um, the – well, that that's that's it. That's what you're going to get next week because <laughs> there won't be any streaming next week. Y'all, oh, no, you'll also get a prelude on Sunday. We've, we've got – Two more episodes of unpacking to do. So, yeah, I'm very excited. We haven't taken a vacation since before Stella was born. So, I'm very excited about that. But, all right, so we're going to let you guys go because we have to go record a whole nother episode of podcast um, <laughs> immediately after this. Yes. But just so you guys know, we are doing a horrible arena next week. I will explain all of this in that episode as well. But we're going to pitch off know, video you know. games. Yeah, if we're going to pitch you know. off video games. You guys get to vote on it. Please vote on it, though. Don't leave us hanging. And, uh, yeah, we'll see you guys next week. Uh, you can contact us on Facebook at Old Man Gaming DH, on Twitter at Old Man Gaming 9. You can join our Discord. Links in the description below. You can influence this in all of our shows from there. And as long as you guys keep watching and listening, you can, we'll keep making them. We'll see you guys next week.